Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Supply and Demand Fundamental and Technical Analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you and uh, I'd like to just say thank you for uh, if you are returning and um, you know I really do appreciate the fact that you do like and subscribe uh, to the channel. If you do subscribe, of course, if you don't like the things that I say or you don't agree with it, then you know that's, that's all good as well, right? We're not going to all agree 100% of the time. Time. But um, just to those of you who do return and uh, do like the uh, content, you know, I just want to say, you know, thank you. And uh, also to those who comment as well. Um, so let's get into uh, some of the fundamentals and the week ahead. Let me just zoom in a bit, I guess, if I can. One second. Here we go. Zooming in. Week ahead. Um, this is from tradingeconomics.com. In the US, investors will be closely watching the release of the FOMC meeting minutes, uh, the University of, Michigan, of Michigan's consumer sentiment, durable goods orders, and new home sales. Also, November flash PMI figures for major developed economies, including the US, Japan, Germany, France, and Australia, will take center stage. Finally, central banks in China, New Zealand, um, I think those are the, really the countries that we're kind of look at will be deciding on the course of monetary policy and there's uh, lots of detail um, uh, in the analysis if you kind of scroll down you can have a read if you go to tradingeconomics.com and it should be on the front page in fact it's right there the week ahead by the time you do read this and so um, let's get into some of the technicals and what's happened during the week starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of uh, dollar strength um, if you don't know against the major currencies and uh, we use this as kind of confluence or keep an eye on it at least um, as confluence if you're looking to buy or sell the dollar right now my bias is to buy the dollar I'm not um, you know this isn't financial advice or anything like that but I'm just uh, telling you what I, you know, do every uh, every week or what my bias is. And uh, for many of you who uh, who know who've been following me for for any length of time, have known that I've been buying the dollar for um, for probably maybe around about eighteen months now. Just literally, you know, buying the dollar on on pullbacks, right? Trying to get in, and you can see, you know, the dollar, you know, trend. And this is, uh, you know, this isn't necessarily the hardest thing to um, to kind of forecast if you understand how you know fundamental analysis uh, does work and by the way talking about fundamental analysis I did say last week that I would release um, a webinar that I recorded on the 3rd of November if I got 25% YouTube likes you know in comparison to views which is one in four and uh, but unfortunately I didn't I got way below that right way below that I think the yeah the channel here this was the video I got 115 likes, but I did get, which was surprising, 1,839 views. So I just want to say thank you to that um, and to those of you who viewed it, but it's definitely way below even like 10%. So I've got a new target, right? Something that isn't too hard because I do want to give you this stuff, right? But you know, there's got, you've got to do something for it. So here's a new target. 10% YouTube likes. One in 10 people have just got to like this uh, video. If you do like it, of course, it's got to be genuine. Um, as well as if you want to obviously, you know, watch the webinar. And um, the webinar is a, is a really good webinar. Um, it really is kind of a bit of like a cheat code and what, you know, what you need to know. It cuts out all the nonsense um, and, you know, and, and fluff and really gets straight to the point as to what gives currencies its value and if you can understand that then you can you know forecast forex trends that last for months in fact you know we've done it you know where we've been buying the dollar for you know 18 nearly two, nearly two years now against especially against like the euro the likes of the euro so um you know these are the things that you're going to learn in the webinar and so it's a 45 minute webinar gives you the nuts and bolts of what you need to know but you've definitely got to do a little something for it not too much effort literally just you know just like right one in ten people got a like and get a thousand plus views right and then um i will release it um to the uh, to the public and to those who uh, did turn up um you know i do again i do thank you and if you do want to watch it again just you know just like but anyways let's get into back into the um into the uh, analysis so for again my bias is to really buy the dollar and a lot of traders were going uh well had a had a short bias on the dollar and last week i did say 
um, that I'm looking to buy uh, the dollar. Um, I think the dollar was a bit of an overreaction and uh, hence the reason why I only have demand zones, right? Because from a demand zone perspective, that's all I'm looking at. I'm not looking at supply zones, although there are some, you know, there are supply zones here. You know, my bias is not really to look for any kind of a, um, any kind of a short bias. Um, but if you are, of course, you can, you know, look for confluences with the dollar index to come back to that, maybe that 109 area and then look for short trades in confluence with, for example, you know, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD. If those are the pairs you're trading me, I'm looking for buyers um, and, um, uh, you know, looking at, you know, fundamentally why is the fact that Fed's uh, Bostic favors slower pace of rate hikes ending near, you know, 5%. Um, and Bostic sees 75 to 100 percent, uh, sorry, 100 basis points of additional tightening, um, and I think that the uh, the the market kind of moved a bit, uh, and you know, kind of anticipated the, the Fed pivot um, a bit too soon, um, especially when it comes to inflation. And it says here that the Fed uh, Reserve, uh, uh, Fed Reserve Bank of Atlanta President uh, Rafael Bostic said that he favors a slowing, uh, favors slowing the pace of interest rates uh, with no more than one percent point um, percentage point uh, more of hikes to try to ensure the economy has a soft landing. So I think there might be a, um, you know, obviously there's going to be a. Um, a reduction in uh, rate hikes as they get to the terminal rate. The terminal rate is basically like a target rate of where they think inflation um, interest rate should be to kind of, uh, it's like, almost like a sweet spot. Um, but again, I think this is also data dependent, right? So they might come out and say that, you know, this is what they believe but also this will be data dependent and he says if the economy proceeds as i expect i believe that a 75 to 100 basis point of additional tightening will be warranted bostic said in preparation remarks for a speech in fort lauderdale florida on saturday it's clear that more is needed and i believe the level of policy rate would be sufficient to rein in inflation over the reasonable time horizon and so um but i do think that the 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 US is in a better position economically, all right? So, you know, there are other central banks that are still looking to, you know, um, hike rates a bit more aggressively like Europe, for example. But um, it's my belief that the narrative will start to change quite soon where it comes to the market finding value in, um, in the economy more than interest rates, because it's not all the time that interest rates will appreciate a currency if it means that appreciating a currency and rate hiking rates is going to push their economy into a recession sooner, right? And so, and also as well, that stuff that you will learn in the, um, in the webinar. Now, uh, Again, going back to uh, the dollar index, for me, it's really just looking for buy trades on any kind of pullbacks. Um, again, we kind of didn't really break this, and I say break it, but you know, this this demand zone is kind of held, you know, when you look at the daily closes, yes, we kind of spiked through it, but um, I do think that the, the, the 105s to 106s are is really the area that I think, you know, the price should go kind of down to could go down to that the 10450s of course who knows but for me that just means that it's a better buy for the dollar i think and it might start to flush out anyone who's started started to look for uh, dollar longs and then it you know stop hunts them and then goes to the upside so let's see what happens but my bias is to the to the upside in comparison to um some of the other currencies um dollar yen uh dollar yen uh, again we've kind of same thing um, in terms of uh, the dollar being a bit of a, you know, having a bit maybe of a, of a pause and it might again go slightly lower, right? If prices do go lower for me, I do like this as a buy and a buy for the dollar um, to the downside and then to the upside. So that 137s, I think it's probably going to be um, a, an absolute bargain for the dollar again, considering that the Bank of Japan is still not looking to hike rates uh, soon. Although the theme for 2023, and you heard it, First, here at some point in 2023, I think the, the yen is probably going to be a buy. But I think it's for the, until the end of the year, for at least yeah, probably till the end of the year, I think the uh, the dollar yen, you know, is um, is a buy. But coming into 2023, um, I think the yen might start to be a potential buy. It just depends on um, what the uh, the central bank do with um, their yield curve control and uh, monetary policy. 
Um, but if you are looking for short trades from a daily zone perspective, you'll have to look for price to come all up to this 146 before um, before looking at any kind of short trades. Uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss pretty much bounced right off of this zone, right? Nice, uh, um, fresh area of demand, bounced off of it. Um, again, it would have taken um, some guts to really uh, look to, to kind of catch a fall in knife. But again, if you believe that the dollar is the stronger of the two, uh, then this wouldn't have been you know, the, the biggest deal in the world, right? Uh, to try and anticipate, especially when you consider how far you know prices have fallen um, when it comes to um, uh, you know, usual um, uh, forex moves, right? In in terms of you know the, the price move in the time that it's moved, it right. So it's moved like five hundred pips, which is like five was that five point yeah about five percent in a matter of like two days, which is very unusual. Um, so yeah, there are uh, forces at work that um, will probably end up you know uh, pushing prices to the upside at least temporarily. Anyways. Um, if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar, pull back to that demand zone, I think is decent. Um, if you do want to be a, a buyer of the uh, Swiss franc, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if prices pull all the way back up or if prices make new lows, creating a uh, supply zone here and then looking for a pull back up into the 95 areas before uh, looking at getting short. But um, I'm not really looking to trade that pair at all. Uh, dollar CAD and the dollar CAD again bounced nicely off this area here this is a demand zone um, again the dollar CAD is not a trade that I'm looking or a pay I'm looking to trade I think there are better trades out there if you are looking to buy the dollar again against the CAD I think any kind of pullbacks is probably decent or oh, this would be a better zone the 13 150s I think would be decent uh, better price if you are looking to continue to short the uh, the dollar against the Canadian dollar, then any pullbacks into the uh, this supply zone, I think, is actually quite decent for a uh, a sell trade. Uh, but again, for me, buying the Canadian dollar fundamentally um, against the dollar US dollar, I'm not not really keen on doing that at all. Um, New Zealand dollar, very interesting. New Zealand dollar has held up quite well, and um, I think for the eagle eye amongst you, um, you may have read that here. That in New Zealand, the RBA is RBNZ, sorry, is expected. Let me just zoom in a bit. Is expected to raise rates by 75 basis points, the fastest rate hike since the start of its uh, 325 basis point tightening cycle, and uh, and so that typically and usually helps with. Um, or can help with uh, currency appreciation, right? So while the dollar may might have strengthened against other currencies, you're seeing obviously um, the fact that the New Zealand dollar actually, I think they've ended up probably just pricing in that um, that that 75 basis point hike, of course. Um, so again, if you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar, you're looking really for a pullback into a demand zone here. If you're looking for um, a sell trade, meaning you're buying the uh, US dollar, then um, this is actually a decent zone to look for any kind of short trades. But again, you've got two central banks quite, I would probably say that the RBNZ is probably a bit more hawkish than the um, than the um, uh, the Federal Reserve, as we've you know kind of seen from, from um, the article. But... Um, yeah, so, so for me, it's not really a, a, a trade or a currency pair that I'm looking to trade anytime soon. There is something that we are watching in the uh, in the group, in the Discord group. And by the way, if you do want to join the Discord group talking about it, um, there is the Trading 180 mentorship and the enrollment does start on Monday the 28th of November until Friday the 2nd of December, right? So those are the opening, um, that's the opening period and it's going to be the final opening of 2022 and the next enrollment is going to be late January, early February of 2023. So go to trading180.com if you do want to join um, and really learn um, high level uh, fundamental analysis to apply to your um to your technicals and uh, get you know a lot of uh, good trading ideas, but um, one of the one of the uh, trade ideas that we're, we're talking about in the um, in the group is COVID zero, right? Some of you may be aware of this COVID zero in China, right? And um, meaning that if China reopens, 
then the commodity currencies are potentially a you know a buy so um let's see what happens there if, if you get a pullback on that and then you know you start to see some news around um china reopening then i think uh the commodity currencies are a buy would it be a buy against the us dollar hmm yes i would say so um but more so against probably some other currencies. But um, yeah, looking for that. But that's the only route, the only way I'm I'm going to even entertain an idea of buying the uh, New Zealand dollar, uh, US dollar um, uh, currency pair. Uh, pound dollar, pound dollar. Zooming out, right? Pound dollar. As many of you know, I am uh, you know short on this currency pair. I am actually short now in and around this area. I uh, got in uh, last week, and so um, let's see if it rolls over. And we did have, if we go to the uh, UK, if we can go to the UK, one second, uh, UK, I uh, must have missed that, US economy, we're talking about the US economy, uh, UK, right, here we go. So the UK debt binge threatens to haunt its bond market for years, so the gross financing Project to raise one trillion by 2026, 2027, and 10-year yields jump a full percentage point. Now it says so investors are slowly coming to terms with the sheer size of the UK government's borrowing needs over the next few years, and it doesn't look pretty. And so, um, how that how that relates to currencies is that you've got a lot of government debt, right? And if um, the 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 bond market, which is the gilt market in the UK, uh, and um, which is basically government debt, right? If they're worried about you know how investors are going to invest in government debt, it doesn't look good because then if the bond market sells off, then it doesn't um, fill, um, I guess, in global investors with um, with with confidence that the government debt can be paid off, which then affects um, the economy, right? And so. Um, there's some major issues going on in, in, in the in the UK. And it also, you know, to top that off as well, is that Britons are charting the UK, charting the global economy, UK income set for record drops. So Britons are about to experience a record drop in disposable incomes as Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, raises taxes and cuts spending to clean up economy already in recession. So the UK programme represents the sharpest entrenchment in the government spending since the austerity budget set out after the global financial crisis. The measures have come as the nation's inflation rate hit a 41 year high of 11.1 percent in october more than five times the central bank's target and so you know not only um the, 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 you've got fiscal issues right fiscal being meaning government you've got monetary monetary policy issues right and i think you know even though other countries have got in the kind of like the same boat it's always a, about the dog with the least fleas right who's the dog with the least fleas the dog with the most fleas the dog with the most fleas for me is you know the uk and you know on top of energy prices and costs and you know um government being already in debt you know what i mean it's um it's it's a bit of a um a very very um uh difficult situation for the UK more so than for example you know the US so for me that divergence uh you know should mean at some point and I don't know whether it's going to be now or you know or maybe later on you know this week prices might go higher before they go lower but at some point um everything is pointing towards a lower pound dollar so um let's see what happens there so for me it's all about you know short trades right now hopefully you know i've got some targets down at the 110s as well so i'm looking at least if this trade runs to around at least a minimum of the 110 111 area um probably looking at a uh, good maybe eight nine hundred pips uh to the downside and so let's see what happens there but if you are looking to be a buyer and i don't know why that is uh, a supply zone when it should be a demand zone that should be all demand um and if you are looking to be a buyer of the uh, the pound for whatever reason, then you know the first area you're looking for is anywhere within this uh, within this demand zone. I'm not saying it's going to go straight down a hundred, you know, a thousand pips or nine, eight to nine hundred pips. It could you know bounce off of that zone as well and bounce off of it again, and then you know make its way down. Um, who knows, right? Who knows how it's going to get there? But for me, the path least resistance should be continue to be to the downside. And if we look at, you know, the where the where the dominant trend is, if you're a um, you know technical analysis, you know, trend follower, then ultimately, um, 
you would you would assume or you would think that the the trend is still to the downside fundamentally you know trends are driven by you know medium to long term fundamentals and so for me this is just quite a deeper pullback um due to obviously uh, i think a dollar overreaction not necessarily pound strength and um i think once uh, the the you know in going in towards the end of the year i do think that um, we should want to roll over because there's really nothing positive for the pound or unless you know the dollar does start to you know show some major cracks in the economy but um for now i can't see that really happening of course this is a probabilities game right nobody knows for sure and there's no definites but um from a probabilistic perspective just looking at you know really um, i think it's to the downside is where we should want to go over the next uh, few weeks at least towards the end of the year um and if not then i'll just keep getting short up here because eventually this is going to you know this is going to roll over and value um is going to show its face and so uh yeah pound dollar euro dollar um similar thing uh in in with, with the euro dollar i think the dollar is in a better position than than the euro uh the euro was really kind of outperformed in terms of more dollar weakness than euro strength um the euro uh spending big and badly shows energy crisis risks for europe policymakers call for temporary targeted and timely energy help and european commission says 70 percent of measures taken aren't targeted and uh, crisis weary european governments uh that are spending big to cradle their economies through the energy crunch risk causes and causing longer term harm by spreading fiscal uh, support for firms and households too widely and so the, with inflation at record levels and central banks rushing to lift borrowing costs to rein in prices policy and policy makers and, and economists are warning of counterproductive clash if countries don't follow a rule that uh, that's come to be known as the three T's temporary targeted and timely anyways um, you know Europe have got their you know their major issues as well they did avoid a recession just barely uh, technical I say well, I say it's a recession uh, I guess contraction so a negative um, a quarter of GDP growth um, whereas the UK didn't by the way so um, but the, you know the better out of the three when it comes to the euro the dollar and the pound um, is going to be the dollar right the dollar cap came in at 2.4 2.6% GDP wise so for me again part of this resistance is to the downside if you are looking for a you know pullback to some sort of demand zone then that's going to be the first demand zone to look for any kind of buy trades if prices do go even higher though and again for me i'm looking to still be a buyer um of the dollar aussie dollar again coming up to a nice uh, supply zone but if you're looking to buy the us dollar then this is a decent area to look for that and any pullbacks into a demand zone is going to be decent again looking for buying of commodity currencies for me especially against the dollar is going to be driven by um china's reopening um and but until that happens i'm not looking to buy any commodity currencies against the us dollar um but yeah those are pretty much your options and if prices go even higher and you want to be a buyer of the us dollar then um, 69, 68.50s to 69s are really where you want to look for any kind of sell trades to buy the US dollar. Aussie yen, um, Aussie yen again, a bit of a um, yeah. I, I think for me, I think I think the, the the buying of the Australian dollar is really driven. I really want to pull back. Matter of fact, if it can get down to the 90s, I think that's going to be really nice for me to look for any kind of buy trades. But again, it really is dependent upon the global economy risk sentiment um and that but so i think for me the uh the the, the better buy although there could be definitely a buy at 91s 9150s i think a fresher area of demand in terms of you know going down to the 90s is probably the best um area to look for buying of the australian dollar if you want to be a buyer of the japanese yen then you could look for the 95s but i think the 96 is a fresher area of supply it is going to be the better buy um going into the end of the year this trade is a bit of a more of a difficult one to to look for a trade so i'm, I'm watching it but i'm not actively looking to uh, trade it i am it is on my watch list but not just not um just not um i'm gonna wait for you know the best opportunities to arise before getting involved and finally gold and gold has made a massive you know run up 
been saying is that you know the uh, central banks have been buying you know buying for for cheap and so uh, I am actually a buyer of uh, of precious metals regardless of what happens so any kind of pullbacks into uh, these zones I think are really nice and I think the the gold has definitely found the floor so the ones the 1614s have definitely been seen as buying opportunities buying buying um, and so if prices do get back down here although looking to the left this has been you know this has been bought you know several times it's not a bargain anymore I do I will be prepared to be a buyer in, a, in and around this area here if prices can pull back um, I don't know whether they will pull back to these zones so um, if the dollar is again fed pivot right meaning that they're coming off the boil when it comes to interest rate hikes if they start to reduce interest rate hikes inflation um, is it still going higher in terms of you know global inflation then i do think any of these pullbacks to these demand zones are decent if you do want to get short on the on gold then you're looking for a pullback into the 1790s before looking at getting short on the daily time frame chart and that brings me to the end of this video again uh, just as a quick reminder Trading 180 membership opens on Monday, the 28th of November, uh, last opening this week. And also as well, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, all right, and uh, share the video. Um, one in 10 of you, if you can um, like this video, then you're gonna get some information that is gonna be really, really, really helpful for you. Also as well, in conjunction with uh, this webinar as well that I put out, it's called the three steps to generating profitable Forex trade ideas. Um, it should really give you a, a great foundation as to you know how to apply fundamental analysis um, you know, and uh, really improve your trading over the medium to long term, right? Over the short term, in short term trading, a lot of traders, um, you know, tend to get this a bit um, mixed up and confused is that short term, if you're trading on like five minute levels and five minute time frames or, you know, really like lower time frames, um, fundamentals might not help as much because it also depends on your strategy and whether you're anchoring your. Um, your strategy with higher time frame levels, right? But um, but over the medium to long term, meaning the higher time frames, if you're looking at higher time frame levels and zones, um, then there's no reason why you know you can't um, improve your trading and trading results if you know you're watching this and also as well coupled with um, understanding. You know that you know how to forecast forex trends that last for months um so hopefully we can uh, get this released to you if not then um we have to just try again the, the, the following week right anyways guys take care i hope you have a great trading week and uh, all the best and speak to you all soon